Autumn didn't play around this year. It went straight into winter. This cold weather has me feeling snuggly, like I'd rather wrap up in a warm blanket and go to sleep than do anything else. Yeah, I wish I could hibernate. I think most people have heard of hibernation and know that it's basically a long sleep some animals take through the winter, but there are actually lots of ways that animals can go dormant when conditions aren't ideal. Torpor is the overarching term for a period of dormancy an animal goes into when it's too cold and food is less available. Torpor can be short term, sometimes only the length of a single day or less, but it can also be much longer term if the conditions require it. When an animal enters a state of torpor, it intentionally lowers its body temperature and slows its metabolism to conserve energy. Since torpor requires body temperature regulation, only endothermic animals, those we think of as warm-blooded, can enter this state. That means mostly just birds and mammals. Ectotherms, or cold-blooded animals, can't regulate their body temperatures, but we'll get back to them in a moment. Hibernation exists at the extreme end of the continuum of torpor state duration. Because hibernation usually lasts for the length of an entire winter, an animal that will enter hibernation must first store up a a large quantity of body fat or store extra food in easily accessible caches. After all, there's no way for an animal to completely shut down its metabolism without dying. A hibernating animal will burn the excess fat or wake up to eat the cached food to stay alive through the winter. I guess I should say that they don't actually wake up from hibernation because it isn't a sleep state. Sleep, as we understand it right now, involves some very specific cycles of brain activity. Hibernation, on the other hand, is basically just shutting down all but the most vital body systems in order to conserve energy. An animal might even have a sleep debt when it emerges from hibernation. This is one explanation scientists have given for why some animals demonstrate lapses in their torpor state during hibernation. They might need to come out of the state in order to get some actual sleep for their brains, but no one is sure if this is actually the reason. Animals could also wake up in order to warm their bodies back up to avoid illness or injury, or they might even need to grab a snack from their cash. The term hibernation used to be reserved for the deep sleepers or obligate hibernators like squirrels, groundhogs, and hedgehogs. These animals will engage in hibernation regardless of the weather and the food supply. When winter hits, they hibernate. However, we now use hibernation to refer to any animal that engages in long-term torpor during the winter, including bears, which can be thought of as facultative hibernators who only enter the state when they get too cold or there isn't enough food. But what about the animals that can't hibernate because they can't regulate their own body temperature. Reptiles and amphibians don't actually have cold blood, but their body temperatures are mostly dependent on the ambient temperature of the air around them. So when cold winter temperatures come, these animals will find dens called hibernaculums to snuggle down into a state called brumation. Brumation is virtually identical to hibernation, except that the animal isn't regulating its own body temperature. The environment does that for them. Animals in brumation will wake up on warmer days to drink water water and move around, but otherwise they stay put until spring is definitely on the way. The end of brumation can actually stimulate the production of sperm and eggs in many species, so they're ready to mate as soon as they leave the hibernaculum. Surprisingly, for ectothermic animals like reptiles and amphibians, cold temperatures are often easier to survive than warm temperatures. But if they use brumation to cope with the cold, is there any way for them to protect themselves in the heat? Estivation is the coping mechanism used by many animals for dealing with extremely hot and dry conditions. If you need to estivate, you find the coolest, wettest place possible and just wait it out. This is important because soft-bodied animals like invertebrates and fish are at risk of desiccation, or basically being mummified, if their bodies dry out too much. Reptiles, amphibians, fish, mollusks, and many arthropods will engage in estivation if the weather gets too hot. There are also two mammal species that will engage in estivation, East African hedgehogs and mal gassy, fat-tailed dwarf lemurs. Arthropods and fish have one more trick up their proverbial sleeves, though. The juveniles and adults of many species can go through diapause, which is a pause in their life cycles in response to adverse environmental conditions. One interesting difference between diapause and the other dormant periods I've described is that diapause seems to be mostly genetic. Environmental factors like photo period or the amount of sunlight in a day can still be important triggers, but ultimately diapause is initiated by genetic 
genetic signals. Just like with hibernation, some animals engage in diapause obligately, so they fall asleep and wake up spontaneously. Those that go into diapause facultatively need some sort of stimulus, like warmer temperatures, longer photo periods, or contact with water in order to wake up. So can humans hibernate? It sure sounds like it would be nice during a long, cold winter, but scientists are actually investigating the possibility of humans hibernating during long space flights, like the upcoming missions to Mars. If humans could be like bears and go dormant for long periods without consuming a lot of resources, that could be helpful both psychologically and logistically. There are a few examples of people experiencing similar states. Medically induced hypothermia and the resulting dormant state are used in extreme circumstances, with patients who have undergone invasive heart surgery or other traumatic operations. Some Buddhist monks are apparently able to lower their metabolisms through special meditation techniques. And there's the odd story of Lutska, a strategy supposedly employed by Russian peasants when food ran scarce during harsh winters. But none of these examples are actual hibernation, the way squirrels and bears do it. What they do tell us is that if we want humans to hibernate on the long trip to Mars, the hibernation state will have to be intentionally induced, because humans don't automatically hibernate hibernate on their own. Still, we can do our best to snuggle up and veg out during the coldest parts of the winter. Which animal dormancy strategy is your favorite? Do you think true human hibernation is possible? Would you choose to hibernate if you were sent on the long mission to Mars? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm a periodic contributor on the radio show Blue Dot, so you should go check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.